Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. Well, in this last session of today's Writing Masterclass, we're taking a look at referencing. And I'm joined by Catherine Wall from the Library and John Butcher, Head of Access. Now, we've had lots of Level 1 students here today and Access students, which I'm delighted about. They've been doing all sorts of excellent things. They've been planning their introductions. And they've been planning their conclusions as well after they've been writing their essay. And we've been talking about uh, when to reference in an introduction and conclusion. We've been talking about critical thinking and describing. But one of the things that has come up is we're not sure how to use our own voice, but also acknowledge sources. So I'm hoping to get to the bottom of this in this session and talk about how to reference and when to reference. Okay. Lovely. So, John, if I might ask with you, why do we need to reference? Well, I think students need to be able to demonstrate to their tutors, because obviously we're talking about work that's going to be assessed by a tutor, that not only have they read the appropriate material and on occasion gone beyond that material, but they are acknowledging it. So there's just no no danger that there, there could be a suspicion they're trying to pass work off as their own, which clearly is based on stuff they've read. So it's been quite transparent about that with the reader, which in this case is the tutor, acknowledging that, and you do that, as I'm sure Catherine will say in a moment, you can use speech marks, you can indent things, you cite in your reference, and then you have your list at the end. So it's been as transparent as possible about what you've read. OK, so we spoke earlier about the idea that TMAs or tutor marked assignments are there to assess your learning. So yes. we give you the books or the materials online, you read those and then we ask a question and assess the learning. Mm. So what you're saying, John, is that it's very important that they acknowledge the source of the material and who's words that is, but it can be a challenge to sort of do that when we're encouraging them to write in their own words also. Yeah, and we do want students mm. to write in their own words. I think that's very important. The, and and that's one of the skills you develop as you go through mm. your degree in writing in your own words. But you need to balance that with the recognition that you are, in a sense, uh, critiquing and developing perhaps an argument in certain types of work, drawing on the work of other people. And it might be your, your study materials, your books, it might be websites, it might be other things you've looked at. And it's just really acknowledging that your, your ideas are drawn from those sources. OK, brilliant. Now, Catherine, I'm going to ask you the same question because the library team spend a phenomenal amount of work on <laughs> training events and various resources and skills for students on referencing because it's an incredibly important academic skill. Mm. And, you know, it, it's boundless to, to be nervous about something that, you know, you're just starting to do. So why is referencing important for our new students and what should they be mindful of about the whole concept? Um, OK, so there are a couple of things there. First one, um, you said TMAs are about assessing learning. An absolutely prosaic reason to reference for students at Levels 1 and Level 2 is to say, hey, look, I read this unit and this is what I got out of it. So if there is anything that has maybe, you know, come through slightly confused in the wash, then your tutor can pick it up with you. That's like your absolute most basic, this is what you need to reference. It is also an academic skill. Um, if you uh, go on further than undergraduate study and you find yourself writing journal articles, uh, uh. you will be asked to provide references because the whole point of anything written for academia is that it can be verified. So if someone reads the wonderful thing you have written, they should be able to go and have a look at the things you've read and go, do I agree with this person or not? Um, so in one sense, uh, doing referencing is sort of exciting because you're kind of part mm. of an academic tradition. Mm. Um, takes students a little while to see referencing as exciting, I'm, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, level three postgraduate students start going, oh, yeah, no, I, I get the point of this. This is, this is quite fun. Um, well, maybe not fun, but get the point of it. <laughs> I th no, I think you're right, Catherine. I think it does become exciting, actually, mm. because um, I think there is a... a and, and the only reason it, it's not perhaps at the start of a student's career is the fear factor and it's, yeah. it's really unfortunate that there's just a fear of kind of getting it wrong yeah. but that's not the point the point is as Catherine said you you demonstrate to your tutor that you've read certain stuff and you've drawn some arguments together on that and you're simply there are there are academic conventions about how you do that and I think recognizing that it, it, it's important as part of being a student to kind of engage with those academic conventions and that can be quite an important thing. Mm. Now, Shahida wants to know, which I think is a very good question, how do we know when to reference a point? Okay. 
Well, have you uh, drawn a direct quotation from something you've been reading? Mm -hmm. And therefore, would you be uh, would you be enclosing that in inverted commas or, or, or um, any other way of indicating that? And you would reference that. And of course, as you then get to the end of your piece of work, you would have your, and I'm sure Catherine can say much more about this, you would have your list of references at the end, which is where the kind of a, a tutor might check what you've read and also, of course, what you haven't read. Because yeah. sometimes you'd be expected to read things that you would cite in your in your assignment. And if it's not there, that's a clue then to a tutor to follow up on that. Mm. Naomi wants to know, how do I know what to write exactly when referencing? And I think this is one <laughs> of the key anxieties often. I think as you yeah. picked up before, mm. John, is that people are worried about the format. Have I got the comma right? Is that the mm. parenthesis yeah. right, etc.? But actually, one of the points you've made is that it's most important when to reference, not necessarily the thing. So how do you know? How would you find out? How would Naomi find out what to write? Yeah, so how, how to actually form the reference. OK, mm. so the first thing to do is on your module website, look at the assessment guidance. What referencing style do I need to use? That's mm. your first question. Your, your second uh, point is then to go find that referencing guidance. Now, for 90% of modules, that referencing guidance will be the OU Harvard Guide, um, which will be linked to from your module website, but it is also available on the library website. Um, and then think the type of resource that you're wanting to create a reference for. So um, is it uh, a unit in your module? Is it an ebook? Work out what type of thing it is and then look up in the guide the guidance for exactly what needs to be included. So um, how to divide up the authors, uh, mm. the fact that the date probably lives in brackets, Everything that you need to include will be given to you in the OU Harvard Guide or whichever referencing guidance you're following. Um, and the nice thing about the OU Harvard Guide is that it has examples of fully crafted references as well. So you can do a little bit of, mm. does mine match? Um, mm. But the, the actual where the commas go, what type of bracket has been used, that's much, much, much less important than I need to include a reference here. Mm -hmm. um, but once you've once you've got that, I need to include a reference here. That's what you do. You find the guidance, you find the correct bit of the guidance for the thing you need to reference, and then you formulate the reference. Okay. So Shahida wants to know: Should we reference an idea? <laughs> what an excellent question! Wow. I mean, if the if the <laughs> idea is directly taken from your unit, yeah. then yes, that would require a reference. If it was an idea you had in the bath, uh, you <laughs> don't need to provide a reference. And probably not put it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, depends on the idea, I guess. Um, but no, the, the, you, you do need to put a little bit of effort into working out where that idea came from for whether it needs to be referenced or not. Like, so Georgina came mm. in before and she was showing us an example of something she'd written about Hayek, right? So mm. she's writing about somebody else's idea. Mm -hmm. When might students need to know when Georgina's talking? in the module mm -hmm. material, the book that she's written, the chapter she's written, and when might it be Hayek's ideas? So ha ha if they're writing about Hayek's theory, for example, mm -hmm. when would they reference him versus Georgina? How might they be able to distinguish between effectively what's a primary and secondary source? source? Mm. So um, if, okay, so in the OU Harvard Guide, there, there is a whole <laughs> section on uh, secondary references. It's very long, Catherine. It is. It is. It <laughs> Which is, is why I recommend attending your, <laughs> yeah, attending well, your workshops. It's a quicker the, way. <laughs> the, the, the plus about it being very long is when you work out the type of thing that you want to reference, you just read that guidance for the thing you want yeah. to reference. Yeah. So what we're talking about is secondary referencing. Um, so when uh, a student is um, referencing Hayat's ideas that Georgina is talking about, they would look at the part of the guide that details how you do secondary referencing, um, which will essentially be Hayat cited in and then however the module material needs to be cited. Mm -hmm. um, when they're talking, when they're just wanting Georgina's voice, then they will reference just the module material. Um, and the reference at the end will only be to the module material because the key with referencing is always that you put the full reference of the thing you've actually read. Mm. The, the slightly mm. thing about secondary referencing is that you need to, um, what's the word, give credit to the fact that you haven't read the original yeah. source. Yeah. So they mm. won't have read Hayek. Be Hiac. transparent. 
Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. But they will have read their module material. OK. So, John, if you've got 10 marks for referencing, right, yeah. would you be better off <laughs> spending ages on your end referencing list or the referencing within the assignment? You'd be, mu you'd be much better off spending time on the totality of your assignment. <laughs> OK. And then as, a, as, a, as the second step, you, you do want to think about your references. I, I think there's a balance to be had. I think there's something really important I'd like to get across about consistency mm. so if 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 students are just kind of thinking about am i am i going to get everything right in my in my assignment with my in-text citations that's only really half the story it's really important as we've talked about but then you need to make sure as a little test to yourself at the end that your list of references aligns with and matches the references you've made i i edit a journal and the number of times i have to check through articles that are submitted and I find sometimes not often but sometimes things in the reference list that haven't been included because they were cut out at some point mm -hmm. when the writer was authoring or things uh, within the body of the article that then aren't included in the mm -hmm. reference mm -hmm. and I have to say as an editor that annoys me <laughs> and maybe maybe a tutor might get slightly annoyed at that lack of consistency as well I couldn't possibly say right let's go to the hot <laughs> desk they've got a question for you yeah we've got a few great questions that I think would be good to address for everyone um, Kelly says I'm working on my first TMA and the assignment book says that I only need to use my module material so mm. there's no need to use anything else Would the referencing just be the module book well, Catherine, yes. what do we say about that? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Uh, the referencing will uh, be the different units uh, within your module book or different chapters within your module book, depending on how it's divided up. Um, but you'll, it's pretty likely you'll still need to be able to, you'll still need to put references in. Hmm. Um, but again, your assessment guidance on your module website will let you know 100% for sure. Yeah. Perfect. And I... Uh, Oh, do you want to take one? Yeah. Look, yeah, Peter, I'll, talk, I'll actually. You've been there all day. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put Barbara's point across. Um, this is about a, a fear that she has, so I, I'm, I'm not sure everyone finds it as fun as John does, but um, it, her, her fear about referencing is, has always been, what if I don't know that someone else has said before what I'm saying uh, yeah. and, and I didn't reference it? Well, that's a, that's a that's a very existential question, I think, and and I think how original can we be? But I think if you genuinely uh, have have come up with an idea yourself and you haven't got it out of the OU materials and you haven't got it from anywhere else, that's your idea, mm -hmm. I guess, Catherine, yes. isn't it? And no, you that's you 100%. can't put a reference in. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> and that may be relevant if you're at a higher or postgraduate level, but, but perhaps in level one or, or access, you'd be answering a specific question. Yes. And then I think that there is this issue of common knowledge, which is something we've been talking mm. about quite a lot, is, you know, when do I, you know, say I'm sort of basing this all on the idea that, you know, things can be sensible, for example. Do I need to reference that in the first instance, or could that be common knowledge? Uh, so, I mean, common knowledge is normally facts or dates or things you would expect everyone to know. Um, so your example of this is sensible, you probably wouldn't need to reference um, without hearing the full thing. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, um, uh, standard things would be uh, if you felt the need to say the world was round, that's yeah. not something you're going to need a reference for. Yeah. Um, another way to think of what counts of common knowledge or not is things that could be found in a textbook without a reference. Okay. That's again mm. a sort of a, mm. a nice easy yardstick to go with. Um, but if you're really unsure then your tutor or the library help desk. Yeah, uh, can, can I just really reiterate this Karen? So, so first of all students please start with your um, assessment guides and there will be material in there and then absolutely there will be material on the module website and I think that would be crucial there. And then the first thing I would do is when you have your first contact with your tutor, just check with your tutor what, what sort of referencing conventions would you like me to use. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll be the same as in the module guide, but just kind of get it from the horse's mouth as it works. Yeah. The tutor's going to be the one who's marking your work. 
Yeah, we've got more questions and keep them coming, but I just want to ask you one thing beforehand before we lose that thread, which is some students say, my tutor's always going on about different things with my referencing. Right. Right. So one time they're picking up on my commas, one time they're <laughs> picking up on this, one time they're telling me I haven't referenced here. And I get that because sometimes you don't want to pick apart everything, for example. No. It's about refining and getting better at the referencing and having a go. But how might students deal with that inconsistency, perhaps, of tutors picking up and building effectively? their referencing skills but maybe saying different things well I, I, I would as a, and I think you know I, I don't say this lightly I would honestly go, go back to the tutor concerned mm. and just say can I just double check with you you seem to quite like what I did with that one mm. but you did raise that point yeah. have I understood that correctly yeah. and try and get a dialogue going with them but it has to be said there, there will be some tutors who are a little bit anally retentive about referencing. I suspect okay. you're one, John, with no, what you no, said about the editor. That's a, I, I, I do, that's I a think gross so. calumny. <laughs> Catherine, would I be wrong in that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the hot desk okay. and see what questions we have at home. <laughs> yeah, we've got some uh, great question that I know uh, Renee's asking. If we're allowed to use um, websites that create the we uh, references for Ooh. us, is that something we can do? Ooh. Yes, uh, absolutely. Question totally a fine thing to do. Um, it is quite likely that you'll need to tweak the formatting ever so slightly to um, completely match whatever referencing style you're being asked to use, but can totally use them. I think uh, you touched on it as well, but we just like clarification. If we have um, a text within our course book that's from somewhere else, do we reference the course book or the original text? Okay, so your in-text citation will have the um, uh, the original and your course book, the end of uh, end of assignment, you know, your list of full references, that will just be to your module text. Okay. Um, Harvard Guide versus OU Harvard Guide. Oh. And, and, oh. And, 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 <laughs> Can I just say, we've got a great audience today. In, in, in some sort of reference <laughs> battle of <laughs> I guess so. And in, actually, there's one, uh, someone's made a comment that actually um, her history module doesn't use um, OU Harvard. No, it's, no. It, it uses another method, so there's uh, right. the different methods out there. Yes, there, there absolutely are different methods out there, and that's why one of the first things to do is check which one you need to be using. Mm. Um, in terms of uh, OU Harvard Guide viz Standard Harvard, um, the OU Harvard Guide is meant to be simpler to follow. It's a slightly simplified version of full Harvard um, and what you're asked to use for most modules is OU Harvard, so I would have a look at that. I mean, by all means, if you want to have a look at Harvard as well, you can, but um, that, that would sort of only be for interest. It's OU Harvard is likely to be the one you need to look at. Mm. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, I'm just getting some feedback on what people have been voting for at home um, on our tools. We asked whether they think they know how to reference. Um, slightly less than know when to reference. So how to reference, 63% say that they do, 11% are unsure, but 84% think they know when to reference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's this, this idea of the convention, the how to reference, and you've mentioned mm -hmm. the in-text citations and the end references. Can mm -hmm. you give us a brief rundown of, I know you've mentioned the chapter author and the, yeah. the, the date, the, the important in the mm -hmm. middle and then your, your publication that you've got it from at the end but briefly could you just tell people at home who might be worried about that side of things how it all works okay so different resource types will um, have different information that you need to give the reader so they can go and find what you've read and mm -hmm. after all that's the point mm -hmm. of referencing mm -hmm. so depending on the I the type of thing you have read will depend define what needs to be in your full reference. Um, that is pretty, well, there's always an author, there's always a date that the thing mm -hmm. was published, yeah. um, there is a title of the item. If you're referencing a journal, there'll be, a, sorry, if you're referencing a journal article, there'll be a title of the article and the uh, name of the, the journal yeah. that the article appears in, sorry. Um, and uh, it's also pretty likely that you've got um, a page reference. Yeah. Um, and what else would we might need? Be in a journal, there might be an edition, 
and a volume number, Thank things you. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're referencing online, uh, an online material, and it's likely if you're using the lovely library, it will be online, um, then you'll require an access date and where you got the um, item from. So and what if it's one of our safe. lovely videos? We often have videos in our module materials. Yeah. How, how do we reference those? Okay, so... Um, Oh, now you really are testing my knowledge. You are going to need um, the name of the video. Uh, you're going to need an author for it. Um, you're probably going to need the type of thing that it is. So video somewhere in there. Mm. Um, and then again, where it came from. So um, a link for the module website mm. and when you access it. Because as you say, the point is that people can find it. And obviously, yeah. if yeah. we've given it to you, we'd like to know sort of where it's from. But ultimately, yeah. you're not going to lose massive marks. I mean, Mark's been asking about marks, <laughs> as he would do. He says, would you lose marks if you use Harvard instead of OU Harvard? But I also wanted to ask, because people can sometimes get quite worked up about the multimedia material. Would mm. you get marked down if you just said, video about Martha, Y032, <laughs> you know. Uh, can, can I say, I yeah. really, really hope a student wouldn't lose marks for using Harvard rather than OU Harvard, mm. because I think for me it's the consistency yeah, yeah. between the, the uh, intensive citations. And it's a very subtle difference, it? isn't very it? Very subtle difference. But, but Catherine, I don't know if you can help with the second part of the mm. question. Ask it again, Karen, I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> About whether it's enough to sort That's of it. have a go yeah. at something, if it's if it's something in the module material, mm -hmm. um, not to get too wound up, because you don't know who's authored it really. I mean, who has authored a TV programme? Do you know what yes. I mean? It's very difficult to find out. So, um, the, yes, as you say, the important thing is to have a go. Um, you won't be penalised. You might not get all the marks available for referencing, mm. but the marks available for referencing are always capped mm -hmm. because they're not, um, that's not, your style of referencing isn't nearly as important no. as no. being able to demonstrate that you understand the module material. Mm. Um, you know, that's the important bit really. Um, so whilst they might not gain all the marks, they won't be penalised. Um, and I would have said at level one, actually just giving it a go should mean that you get at least some, if not all, of those marks. Yeah. You'll only get proper penalised if you're in John's, John's journal. Yeah, well, well, uh, you will. Uh, go on, Catherine, and then I'll come back with one. Go on. Or if you do uh, something really naughty, like actually go and buy an essay from somewhere oh, else. Don't oh, do that. people oh, wouldn't no, do, do, do that. No, no. That. That, that, Karen, that, could I just definitely. throw in a, mm. a quick thing about students on the open degree yes, or the open programme? Because I think that's quite important. So the, the, the academic conventions around referencing would tend to be shared in mm. disciplines, but obviously, as Catherine said, maybe there are some modules at the Open University which suggest a different way mm -hmm. of referencing. And that, that's perfectly okay. For example, I had a, an article through to my journal recently, which was a perfectly well-written article in a completely bizarre set of referencing conventions because they happened to come from a science and technology background and that was the way they did it. Oh, they yeah, did yeah. numbered referencing, yeah, I think it's yeah, called, yeah. isn't it? Now, I'm not going to turn that article away, but I will go back to them and say, look at the journal website and see how you should have referenced it, please. And it's much the same with students. Mm. Have a look at the module website, mm. do what you're being asked to do, mm. but don't go crazy about it. Mm. Just mm. do the best you can. Yeah. And I know for, for colleagues in law as well, there are slightly different there conventions are. also yes. then, and we've heard from some people doing history. Mm. Um, so it's important to, the main thing is acknowledging the sources, following the guidance that, that you can, mm. um, and, and being consistent. Yeah. Yeah. We've got more questions for you. I Yay. hope you can. Yes, so people are keen on this, so uh, let's see what they've got to say. Uh, I think Cassandra's got a really great question just uh, to clear everything up for us. If we're describing something from the module book, do we have to reference after every sentence that we put in when we're making that description? Or um, what's the best way to do it? If oh, that's a good question. question. Yeah. Could be an ipid question. Go on, Catherine. <laughs> Um, so you would normally um, put uh, maybe one or two references in your in your paragraph. Um, so if you're taking a reference from a module book and uh, everything is sort of from the same unit within one paragraph, then you'll just bung a reference at the end of your paragraph saying this all came from unit two. Mm. If within a paragraph you've got a couple of sentences about unit two, mm. 
and then you talk about something from unit one, you'd have one reference where your unit mm. two stuff was and one reference where your unit one stuff was. John, mm. when you're writing, do you ever use language to frame what people have done to help out with the referencing? For example, say, Georgina Blakely writes in her chapter, Blakely mm. writes in her chapter, blah, blah, and blah. Yeah. She goes on to say, blah, yeah. blah, blah, she blah. Mm. Do you ever use language yeah, to help? Yeah, because these are all rhetorical devices, aren't mm. they? And, and, and it's part of really becoming a, a rather more adept and academic writer, I think. Because clearly there are there are there are people I would call them kind of big hitters in the field, you know the great big theorists and the people who who everybody cites and stuff, and you do want to engage with their work, but I think you 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 engage with it certainly as you move up through the levels of being a, a student, you engage with it in a slightly more critical way. So often when students start off, they will they will cite a famous author or a key bit of a of a study guide and do it slightly uncritically and do it to kind of make the point for them. Mm. I think as you get through to perhaps um, level six or go on to postgraduate study, maybe you, you're then being a bit more critical and you might say, although X says this, Y says that. Mm. And then you come to your own formulation out of that. So I think, I think that kind of rhetorical device is absolutely part of what you're aspiring to as a student. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Any other questions? I had a conversation with a student um, about 20, 25 minutes ago online, um, Karen, and it was in relation to time management, and they were asking how long should I, so, sort of should I build time into my TMA preparation to account for referencing, and how much is, you know, is this a sort of a summative activity at the end of my TMA, or is it something I should be addressing as I travel through it, that sort of thing? Well, it depends whether you want to be efficient or not, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's probably easier in the long run to um, do your references as you're writing yeah, your embedded, assignments. Yeah. So, you mm. know, you've you've written paragraph one and you know you've taken ideas from other places. At very least, mark in that paragraph where you've used other people's mm. ideas so you're not at your final draft going, hmm, I wonder where idea three came from. Yes. I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be easier for you if you do that sort of embedding. Um, what you might do is then just have rough references at the end so you're not spending mm. a long time whilst you're writing going yeah. oh have I included everything have I need have a little tally list as you go yeah, yeah. yeah. but and then sort of your final draft is well my in-text citations aren't going to move do mm. do all my in-text citations match my references for sticklers <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but but also that there there is a thing about this does save you time in the end because yeah. the worst thing I've ever done is found a really good quotation that I wanted to use in something. Yeah, I've done that. And I haven't written down the page yeah, reference. Yeah. And then you come to put it in your piece of work and you just can't find it again. Yeah, you yeah. look really hard and you can't find it. So if you embed it, as Catherine said, almost make it the habit. As you're mm. writing, you're doing your references as you go. Yeah. yeah. Now, how many, people were saying uh, sort of some of the questions about how many references you might have. I'm assuming you need at least one in a paragraph, don't you? Or one in a big thing you're saying, if you're referring to the material or you're referring to something. Because it wouldn't be yeah. that idea in the bath, necessarily. No. But, but yeah, you're right. So, um, essentially, each, each idea should probably have one or two references. Okay. Um, if you think of your, your essay plan um, being, I'm going to make these points yeah. and these are the yeah. sources that I'm going to use to make mm. them, especially at levels one and two, you should have quite a good idea. You know, point two in my essay is going to come from this unit in my yeah. module. You, you do need to make sure all those things are. are yeah, and it, I think that's true. It might vary from discipline to discipline, of course, yeah, yeah. and I think it might be different in the sciences, for example. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't want it to be formulaic, but I think, yeah, if you're, if you're writing a coherent argument, it's likely that, let's say you're making half a dozen points, you'd be likely to need to back those up with a similar number of references. Yeah. And do you think there's, I mean, at the end of the essay, once you've done all of this diligently and you're reading it back to somebody else, you think, I haven't got a reference in there, but do I need one? Do you ever sort of, when you've written and edited and got your finished mm. product, ever take a look back and think, actually, that that is a big point there. I could do with putting a reference. And do you ever add them? Even if you've been yeah. diligent working through, do you ever think at the end of the day, I need a few more? 
it, I think it's a really good lesson about going through your work or indeed letting someone else go mm. through your work to, 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 to read it for you. I, I often find that I've made rather a grand assertive statement without citing anything and I think oh actually I really ought to put a reference in there so yeah. I think that double check can be quite important. Yeah. Well mm. I think that's a is there anything to back that grand assertive True. statement up? Yeah. And actually, if there isn't anything to back that Don't grand assertive yeah. maybe, statement, maybe that needs a line through. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it says more about me, perhaps. <laughs> well, Renee says thank you so much. She feels so much oh. better now about referencing. So uh, Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> says John, but don't put anything into John's journal unless you want <laughs> some feedback. I just want to check if there are any other questions that we've missed, Peter and HJ. I don't think we'll be, uh, we have actually missed everything. I think uh, we've covered all the questions that are asked in the chat. I think the main thing to remember, if there's anything that you think of later that you're unsure on, I've put the Harvard reference guide in uh, the chat, which is really useful. I've always had it tabbed on for my assignments. And of course, there's always these uh, training sessions with the library as mm. well, and the live chat with the library that we can yeah. use as well, which I'll post in there. Good, I was hoping we'd come on to that. So, Catherine, tell us about those sessions and where people can yep. find out about some of the training events you do. OK, so uh, the library does um, a mixture of different training sessions. We do do one on referencing called the why and how of referencing. Our next live one of those is on the 1st of November at 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, so anyone is more than welcome to come along to that. Um, we give those sessions using Adobe Connect, so all you need is a computer, an internet connection, or a mobile phone and an internet connection. Um, and we'll talk about uh, why you reference, when to reference, and a little bit about how. Mm. Um, we do have other training sessions on different topics, um, and all of those can be found on the library website on the help, uh, sorry, on the training and events tab. Um, we also have a recorded version of all our sessions. So if you are thinking, I want some more about referencing, I'm really excited. <laughs> you never know, it could happen. Um, there is a recorded version on the uh, training and events page of the library website uh, for the how and why I'm referencing. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much. I've heard because we do Adobe Connect workshops and I'm going to our final question. If you haven't voted on this, do and we'll show the results. We do Adobe Connect workshops at Student Hub Live. So let us know if you've been, if you're planning to attend, if you'd like to book one or if you'd rather eat chocolate all on your own. We'll show you the results at the end of those <laughs> because they are lots of fun. The library also offer a lot of other, apart from the yes. extensive OU Harvard guide, mm. the live chat service can be very helpful yeah. for students. So there is a there's a help desk um, which has a web chat facility, which is a available all the time whenever you're studying there is a librarian there um, and you can also contact us by email and telephone um, and we are totally happy to answer any library related questions and any of our referencing brilliant thank you if in doubt talk to a librarian indeed not you <laughs> about everything not just referencing <laughs> oh you've been absolutely brilliant thank you john what does the rest of the day hold for you too many meetings can i make one final plea the, the other thing is if you if you get your reference in right you will get credit for yes. the work you do and you won't run um the danger of um not being accused of i don't mean that but being being kind of questioned about plagiarism mm. and I think this is a real fear that students have so if you get your referencing right that's a real positive thing and you're you're then a proper student excellent <laughs> we all like being proper students mm. well thank you very much both and uh, thank you everybody at home 53% uh, of you have been to one of our Adobe Connect workshops which is great wow. and 26% are planning to attend we have one on Wednesday evening on critical thinking but we also have a program about one a month except December when we've decided we should all go off and eat Christmas cake and other such delights um, throughout the calendar year so you can book those their tickets because the places are limited as opposed to because they cost money um, imagine how much cake we could buy if we did but um, you can reserve your space on those by visiting the Student Hub Live website. You can also tell us what you've thought of today's show by emailing studenthub at open.ac.uk and there's a feedback form on the website there as well. We've got plenty more events planned for you. Um, so Peter and HJ, final words from you both. 
I think we've just had a great time chatting to anyone, isn't there? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, as always. Yeah, there's been lots of people, mm. I think, that have benefited from, from hearing from each other um, mm. and from getting... There's been a lot of people offering it, their, their own experiences and their own advice to mm. others, which has been really nice to see, so... But I think, as always, if there's anything we missed or anything you want to send us or talk about or you think of later, just email us, studenthub at open.ac.uk or we're on Twitter as well, at studenthublive. we are happy to get at, back to you. And if, like me, you'd like to go over things a couple of times, everything will be on the YouTube channel after. So uh, there's some great sessions on there. We've had our quiz last week as well, didn't we? So uh, there's lots of stuff to catch up on there. Brilliant. Well, thank you both. You've been amazing. And thank you, everybody at home. Part of what makes these events so special is what you're all talking about at home. Sharing advice, knowing you're not alone is so important. Um, and as we've said before, you know, your student support team, your tutors, there is a fabulous body out there that you can reach out to. So I hope your studies have started well. I hope they're going well for you. Thank you for watching. We now have a replay session before we end today's programme and the chat will still be live so you can keep talking to each other. We're going to show something that we filmed a couple of weeks ago which is all about assessment and why that's important and Peter gives us a wonderful spin on how this can be really used as a learning opportunity as opposed to something to be too frightened of so I hope you enjoy that session do come to more of our events in the future let us know what you think and thank you so much for watching that's all from us now see you soon